Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Two wide receivers will be looking to be number one targets on the field in today's game. It's Thomas's Broncos going up against Allen's Chargers. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Larry, football is back in Los Angeles as we welcome you inside the StubHub Center in Carson, California. The scene a moment ago, unlike any other in the NFL for a lot of years, the crowd here in Carson might be half the size of a normal NFL stadium, but they are twice as loud as their Chargers get set to face off with the Denver Broncos. Hello, folks. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn. And a moment ago, Larry gave us a look at the two number one receivers that will be facing off here. But you think it's more than just one-on-one. -on -one. Both these teams, they've got a number of pass-catching options. And I'm eager to see how both teams will attack the opposite defenses because is it going to be where they're going to be a dart-throwing team, throw it short and try and make plays that way? Or will the long ball be a part of it? But you're right. Lots of options for both of these squads. Here's the kicker, Nick Novak, to get us started. And we are underway in Southern California. This is taken at the three. <laughs> and he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. They're led out by their quarterback out of Northwestern University. It's Trevor Simeon. What a ride he's been on these last few years. I remember seeing him in high school before he went to Northwestern. Didn't get on the field all that much there. And then got to Denver as a seventh-round pick and ended up starting the season opener in 2016 for the defending Super Bowl champs. carry it's C.J. Anderson across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. The offensive starters now for the Broncos. A team that was consistently in the top five just a few seasons ago. They finished 27th overall in offense in 2016. A combination of uncertain line play and inconsistent quarterback, I think, led to that ranking. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. Let's hit on Melvin Ingram as we take a look at the defensive starters here. You know, he was the AFC Defensive Player of the Month for September and last week against the Giants. What do you have, two sacks on Eli? He certainly did, two of their five sacks. I like how you started that. Let's hit on Melvin Ingram. He's the one doing the hitting, though, right? <laughs> Seven and a half sacks on the year, one behind Demarcus Lawrence of Dallas for the NFL lead. And how happy is he to have Joey Bosa in the lineup as well? Because with the two of them, who are you going to block, mm. right? Can, can you double both of them? Not likely got to pick your poison and in this case Melvin Ingram is really cleaning up off the play fake to Charles this is Simeon he'll air it out deep for Thomas and he can't hang on to it nearly picked he's known for his hands defensively but instead it just brings up fourth down and that's a great opening series defensively. You force what should be a three and out on your opening possession. And great coverage there on third down to force the incompletion to set up fourth. Now the second-year man from Syracuse, Riley Dixon, on to punt. Travis Benjamin, deep for the Chargers. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. 
Chargers brought out onto the field by Phillip Rivers coming off the win against the New York Giants. That was the game that had a couple of offers. Neither had won. But Phillip Rivers, fifth in the league in passing through five weeks. Not his finest performance in that win. Hit on fewer than 50% of his passes, but they did get the W. Yeah, they got it, and he drove them to 10 points in the final four minutes to steal the victory. So you've known me long enough now. That's how I measure big-time quarterbacks. Doesn't matter about your stats throughout the game. What did you do when the game was on the line? And Phillip Rivers did it again and got the first victory of the year for his Chargers. Now a first carry for Melvin Gordon. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Second down, they'll run with Gordon. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 17 yards for the Chargers there as they've got themselves a first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Now Rivers going to give it off to Gordon. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Starters on offense here for the Chargers. And in the backfield, Melvin Gordon in the win over the Giants last week, he went over 100 yards, starting to get it going. He certainly is. And remember, he asked for the ball because he had said, where are my touches? What's going on here in the early going? Because he's a dual-threat guy. Can run it, can catch it, you name it. But how about this? Seven of eight leading rushers on Sunday. Played for winning teams. You know what I feel about that running back renaissance. <laughs> Guys like Melvin Gordon touching the ball and carrying it. That makes me very, very happy to watch. They'll run it now out of the gun. He had a great move, but he'll still be stopped shy of midfield. It's a four-yard pick up there, and it leaves him with third and five. And a look now at how the Broncos line up defensively. And they've kept the core intact from the unit that won Super Bowl 50. Secondary, still a strong suit. Number one against the pass in 2016. They've ranked fourth overall in total defense, so they haven't dropped off at all. They're hoping to get some more consistent play from their offense to get them back to the Super Bowl. And the offense in that middle ground here on third down. Third and five. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. Open man, it's Allen. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Rivers saying, welcome back, Mr. Allen. It's a Charger first down. Well, from their point of view, this game could not be starting out much better, could it? Force a punt on defense, and now they're moving it crisply on offense. Crisply, I like that. Like yeah, that. yeah, moving it very, very well. Looks like the defense on there. He also a little bit. He put a score in here. Long way to go, but you're right. That's a heck of a start. Yeah, and I think this is where the play caller is looking at his play sheet and saying, "Do I have that dagger play? Do I have that play and just finish him off right now?" Because I think they'd love to gain that big advantage early. And he's able to carve out about six there, down to the 37. Good, strong run against the 3-4 set. And that 3-4, you've got to have your guys up front eat up a lot of blocks. The guy playing over the center, the nose, he usually has to take on double teams. But when you're able to successfully move him, you're often able to get some yardage. And that's when linebackers have to clean up and make tackles. Rivers now on second down. And right side, Henry's got it. 
Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in the paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like you're shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first run. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker. Can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Now Gordon on first down. Had a nice move, but can't break away. Down just inside the 30. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Tough running there. That's a hard earn four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Second down following the run. Play fake to Gordon. Now Rivers. This is Gordon on the dump off. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. Still first down. complete to Gates and he'll go down here at the 12 yard line and it's a 14 yard pickup but it'll still be second down I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early we expected that they told us they were going to come out firing but four for four on the opening drive they like that <laughs> they don't just like it they love it because now everyone gets locked in the confidence jumps up everyone's easy about what they're doing out there and by the way, they're looking at the sideline thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. Now a handoff looking right. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up a first and goal. The running game's played a huge part of getting them down to this point on the field. I say stay with it. Keep pounding the football. Keep driving. Keep grinding. Yeah, even down in the red zone, keep going for it. No doubt about it. Dance with what brought you. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. First and goal, Melvin Gordon. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. I saw Von Miller in college at Texas A&M, and all I kept hearing about was his speed off the edge to the quarterback. But what impressed me, his balance and his ability to take on blocks and be a force in the run game as we just saw there. Now a second down throw for Rivers. This will be caught at about the five. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. That catch good for eight, but still, it's third and goal now. 
Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. And he took the contact as he was throwing it, and the ball drops incomplete. Pressure, and that's certainly going to be a key to this game going forward. And that time, they were able to get in there and influence the throw. And remember, quarterbacks got to get rid of it. They don't have the tuck rule that they can fall back on anymore. it through and the Chargers grab themselves a 3-0 lead so a 15 play drive can't believe that only resulted in three but it did that is somewhat amazing isn't it when you hold the ball that long run offense that well yet only put three points on the board it has to be a little bit of a disappointment doesn't it has to Nick Novak back out following his field goal to send it away. This one fielded at the five. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. So the Broncos coming out now. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion. Guys a little I bit don't, jumpy. But you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three now and out. And have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. <laughs> Start the drive with Anderson. He'll be tackled shy on the 35. Pretty shifty footwork, but didn't buy him much. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Again, Anderson. And an alley to run. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. They go play action here on first down. Over the middle, that's caught by Taylor. And he's brought down. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run. Big time pass. A one two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? They, let's, see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Now it's the Chiefs all time leading rusher. It's Jamal Charles on the carry. And he showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. He's gone over 1,000 yards five times in his career, but he's at the 30-year-old mark, and there's a lot of concern about running backs over the age of 30. Five yards or better per carry in each of his first eight seasons. Now past 30, we'll see if that trend can continue. Oh, 
see if they stay on the ground for second down. They'll keep it on the ground with Charles again. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Short yardage situation. Here's Charles. That is not going to be any help as they dump it behind the line of scrimmage. They'll wind up losing three yards here, and that'll bring up fourth down. One thing that really impressed me about Joey Bosa is that he doesn't sacrifice the run game trying to get sacks. This guy really knows how to hold the point of attack, great leverage, and then goes and sheds people and makes plays. And at 6'5", 270, just a monster. Absolute monster with a really high motor. And McManus able to put it through, and that will tie us at 3-3. So a good kick there, and they finish off the drive with three. And that should be the goal for an offense, finish each drive with points. So that's a nice job there to come away with at least something. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. Now the Chargers offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three points. The kicker. Exactly. He <laughs> put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> Toe <bash. laughs> I don't know about <laughs> <Toe> that. <bashed. laughs> Super tough. <laughs> a first down throw here for Rivers. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Tyrell Williams was the intended target. And it's second down. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Rivers going to turn and give this one to his running back, Gordon. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. He lost two there, and it's third down. Well, the person carrying the ball is always the easy target when things aren't going so well. But I think it's a combination with the Chargers. They've got to get the offensive line going in order to improve those numbers from last year. They weren't very good running it, partner. No, they were bottom of the AFC, second to last in the entire NFL. And they're not going to get a playoff here as time will expire on this first quarter. Three all the score. We'll come back to Southern California after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back now to begin the second quarter with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's the Chargers here with a football. They do, however, have a tough third and long coming up. Safety valve here. That's complete. 
Give him two yards on that play, and that's going to make it fourth down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a the toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd went to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I've never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Let's go. They'll start the drive with Jamal Charles. And a great move on the play as he takes this one past the 25. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. On the draw, Simeon gives to Charles. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. A first down carry here for Charles. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. That's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And you know, oftentimes, the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. They'll try the air now with Simeon. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. I don't know about you, but I wanted to reach out of the booth and snatch that pass myself. That thing floated forever up there. I think that threw off the timing of the receiver. That's why he couldn't get his feet down, even though he caught the ball. You know, Charles, I, I would have liked to have seen that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. For, for you. I, I wanted to see you reach out and catch that. Yeah, you've heard about my hands, huh? <laughs> well, he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. You know, every time we talk with people about the most important quality for a quarterback to have in the NFL, what do they usually cite? Arm strength. Yeah, that's really way down on the list. Accuracy is one of the bigger ones, maybe the foremost one. That's what he needed on that play. Dixon, the putter, is on as he sends it away. And this will pin him back deep. That's going to kick out of bounds right at about the seven-yard line. The Chargers offense gets set. They head back onto the field. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And tough starting field position here. The 
He'll start on the ground. This is Gordon on first down. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Charger first. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. Rivers on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Well, let's take a quick pan across the league and talk about we've got three 0-5 teams still in the NFL. Two that you might expect, Browns and 49ers, but the Giants sitting at 0-5. Yeah, I don't know how many people would have had that in the preseason. If so, we need to hang out with them because they know what they're doing, right? But here's the thing. San Francisco this week, I believe, goes to Washington. Yeah. All right, Cleveland, who do they take on this week? They take on the Texans in Houston. In Houston. And the Giants, do they go on the road to Denver? Yes. So all three on paper are going to get to 0-6. I'm going to make a prediction. One of those three is going to end their skid. And I'm going to tell you who it is. Who? Cleveland is going to get it done. Hot take central. The Chargers on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. They go play action. Rivers fighting through. But in the end, the pressure too great, and he goes down. Adam Gonsis in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. I remember when I was a kid and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel so, oh. I, could pay the, so I could pay the proper okay, price. Okay, how much were they? A dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. Here's Drew Kayser now as he'll punt it away for the second time. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. This is taken at about the 14. A nice job on the return there, 16 yards. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. The Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Here's Anderson as they begin this series on the ground. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. To throw on second is Simeon. His throw incomplete. Virgil Green is tied in the intended receiver, and it's third and four. The Broncos on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and four. To throw is Simeon. Open man is Taylor. He's got it. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That goes as a gain of 36 on third down. Great patience in the pocket. Of course, it's easy to be patient when the protection's good, and it was. Yeah, you've got to pat those guys on the helm and say thanks because they gave him plenty of time to stay back there, survey the field, go through the reads that he wanted to, and deliver the ball accurately. That was really well executed.
Play clock all the way to zero. Didn't get the snap off. Five-yard penalty. And you see the head coach writing that note on his play sheet right now. He's going to be addressing that with his staff. A sense of urgency. Get to the line of scrimmage. Snap the ball. Here we go on first and 15. Now a play fake here on first down. Blitz coming and down he goes. But that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly he was there. Yeah, blink of an eye. That happened fast and a big sack. Second down, Anderson. And down inside the 35, he goes to the 32-yard line. They don't get it all back there, but they do get eight, and it sets up a third and 15. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. The Broncos on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and 15. Here we go now. Green, 39. They'll fake the handoff. Now Simeon. Oh, going deep here for Taylor. And that one incomplete. Had some position but couldn't hold on, and it brings up fourth down. The positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time make a play on the football. But in this case, making a play on the man was all the difference. That's what forced the incompletion. Now Brandon McManus for the Bronco field goal. He was true on his first. This a tough one from 49 yards away. I don't think this will even, nope, it doesn't even get there. Well short, and this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. So out come the Chargers. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. After the missed kick, they're in really good position. They'll begin this drive at the 39 now. They'll start the drive with a run by Gordon. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. This is Gordon as they go to him again. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. I once had a defensive player in the NFL tell me, if I beat and dominate the guy across from me, I'm helping my team. But winning one-on-one -on -one battles is always a part of the game. 
But when you have good team defense, as we just saw there, one broken tackle, but he didn't get away because the rest of the guys arrived to put him on the ground. Rivers now from the 50. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. That one good for 13 and a charger first. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guy playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. Second down. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audibled there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through, and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. Second down, Rivers. Right side catch. This is Gates. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Give them 12 yards there, and the Chargers have a first down. Do you get the sense, Brandon, that people are trying to retire Antonio Gates? They keep thinking this is almost the end of the line, and then he keeps making catches like the one we just saw there. He's the old reliable, you're right, just one of nine players in the NFL with 100 or more touchdowns. left side and he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22 yard line just a yard on the catch there it'll be second and nine well the strategy was evident there get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback who's usually going to win that one the tight end but not there not in this situation how about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle game. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Larry Ridley. Larry will have the highlights of this first half, but he won't have touchdowns because we haven't had any to this point. But there's still time, though, partner. The Chargers on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. Here it's third and three. From the gun, Rivers. He's got a man, it's Williams. And he's brought down the following a pretty juke move that gives him the first down. They're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal.
separating from the gun. Rivers, he couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Second down following the incompletion. From the gun, Rivers. Now he's got it. The catch good for six yards, but now it's third and goal. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. This offense so far on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and goal. Again, it's Rivers, and he takes it in for a Charger touchdown. Antonio Gates from a yard out, and the Chargers are able to strike for six. Well, it was third and one. I was expecting run so much for that. They pass it, they score it. That had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator, you've got four downs here. We're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third. Go ahead and take a shot if you want to. And he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that. If they didn't get it there, that had the feel that they would come back and try it on fourth down. And it is up. And it's good. That'll make our score 10 to 3 now. So that one a long 11 play drive. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. No back out now to kick this one away. Another drive getting ready to start here for Demarius Thomas. Hasn't had his best day to this point here in the second quarter. They're losing. You got to think, though, that also means that maybe the defense doing a good job on him. There's two sides to that coin. I would agree. So you have to give them credit. But that means you've got to find a way to beat that defense and make sure one of your top playmakers touches the football and has an impact on the game. Change formations, change where he lines up, put him in motion, anything possible to shake him free. Maybe that greater impact comes here on this drive. First and ten, Simeon. Over the middle this time to Fowler. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. Shifty footwork gets him a little extra on the play. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Here's Simeon now on second down. To the right side, complete to Taylor. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. Fresh set of downs here. Hey, hey, 
from the gun. Here's Shemian. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Fowler. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. So the offense readies for a second and four. Again, Simeon. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes there's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. Back to the air, Simeon on second down. He goes underneath for Anderson. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. To the air again, Simeon. But he will have a man, Demarius Thomas. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Simeon finding Thomas there to give the Broncos a first down. 90 catches, close to 1,100 yards last year for Thomas. For most guys, that'd be incredible. For Thomas, those numbers, his lowest since 2011. Well, he does have his old offensive coordinator back, so I'm sure he's expecting to get back to his former levels of play. Simeon. Quick hitter here. It's complete. Now before this second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. So the offense takes the timeout and they are back out and ready to rock. now showing on the clock. He couldn't get the hook up there that time with Thomas, and it's third down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a no chance at all. Way easier said than done. <laughs> Throwing on third down, Simeon. And that will be incomplete. Four ticks left here on the clock. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth.
And McManus able to put it through. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game as we send you now to Orlando and our Tiburon Studios where Larry Ridley standing by with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? All right, Brandon, back to you guys in a minute. But first, it's indeed time for our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Chargers are up right now and are looking to keep up the pressure moving forward. The Broncos won't panic either. They know they just need to take it one play at a time. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. About halfway through the second quarter, Brown's going to take down the QB here. This will go for a loss of eight. Third down from inside the 10. Gates is wide open here on the catch, and he capped off the long drive with the TD as they take the lead 7-3. Broncos with the ball, final seconds of the half. Simeon's on target here, and he ends up at the 29-yard line before he stopped on the play. So that'll do it for us here in Orlando. For the call of the second half, let's hand it back over to Brandon and Charles. Brandon. Teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Out comes the Chargers as they'll go on offense now to start this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. They'll start the third quarter on the ground with Gordon. Trying to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all on the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. Rivers now on second down. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Gordon. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Second down throw for Rivers. And out of bounds across the 15-yard line. A gain of four on the play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, doing a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. He's got his man. It's Williams. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. 23 yards on the play. 
A nice little completion there by Phillip Rivers. And you and I were reading the article yesterday, fifth grade. Rivers had to do a project where he had to make a poster about his dreams and aspirations. So he clipped out a football player from a magazine article and pasted his face on the helmet. That's what he wanted to be, and it turned out okay. Not so bad. Not so bad at all. Remember, he's the son of a coach. And on that play, I think he made the old coach proud with that completion. Now a handoff. This is Gordon. That time, the right guard sending him backwards. And so many different types of guys rotate in on the defensive line now, depending on situations. You can get the bulky guy, the fast guy. No matter what, though, you can't hold them. here on first down and it pops free the collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down Charles looking back to last week the injury bug really bit some teams heck Houston's defense lost J.J. Watt and Whitney Merciless about 10 minutes apart has not been a good last two weeks in terms of injuries to key players in the NFL Dalvin Cook the rookie runner in Minnesota who was playing so well he got hurt the previous week, and as you noted, this week for Houston, Merciless goes down, torn peck, he's out for the season. J.J. Watt, fracture in his leg, gone for the season. And how about in New York? Odell Beckham Jr., fractured ankle, going to get a second opinion, likely gone for the season. It's not always as trite as that team wanted it more than the other, but on that play, it actually was true. They were faster to the ball. The Chargers on third down. They've hit four of seven. This will be a tough third and 18. Working out of the gun, Rivers. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Vaughn Miller with a big time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. I give thanks every day that I never had to play offensive line in the NFL and have to try and block <laughs> Von Miller. He was second only to Vic Beasley last year with 13 and a half sacks. Here's Drew Kayser now as he's on to punt for L.A. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. A good kick, 48 yards, four on the return. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance really to set the tone here in quarter three. They can really take charge, can't they? And this is probably how it was drawn up at the half. I think we can go inside the locker room, all right? <laughs> and I think we would see up on the grease boards, stop them defensively, get the ball back for the offense, and let's go downfield and score. Seems simple, right? The last part, we have to find out that's going to happen. But the first part worked to perfection. Did exactly what they wanted, and now their offense has to pay it off. See if they can get the ladder 50%. And they'll try to fire up the running game with C.J. Anderson. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, and you throw it again. Then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set them up. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Out of the gun, Simeon. He finds Taylor, complete. Defense. 
A little too much extracurricular there. When you have a game with a lot of contact, tensions are going to run pretty high. You're going to be emotional, but you have to harness it somehow, and he didn't on that play. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Following the penalty, Anderson takes this to the 32, maybe the 31, defensively rallying to the ball after the nice move. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the linebacker, Jatavis Brown. And he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. Well, this is a defense that can confuse even the best of quarterbacks with their zone schemes. And here you've got a linebacker that's going to stay at home and just sit down in that zone. And this one basically comes right to him. now gears up to lead the offense on the field. He's been pretty solid, pretty consistent. Just the one touchdown pass, but I think he's managed the game well, no? I would agree with you, and that's what you're looking for out of your field leader. Making sure that you're playing well and not making any big mistakes. Oftentimes, that's how you're judged. Mm -hmm. How big a mistake and when it occurs. No interception so far. They'll like that. I just want you to know that you agreeing with me, that's going to get me through this third and fourth quarter. Are you touched? He's patting his heart, boys and girls. He's touched. Respect. Following the interception here, Rivers looking for Allen. He's got him on the slam. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. To throw on second down. Rivers. Gates has it over the middle. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Whether it's Antonio Gates or not, Philip Rivers loves the tight end position. He loves those throws. How about that route he just hit there? Yeah, he's so good in this offense at weaving the tight end in, and sometimes the tight end helping him out, too. Yeah, without a doubt. But how about how much he loves to play the game of football? Isn't it fun to watch him jawing back and forth with the opponents? Absolutely. I think that when he takes a big hit, it actually helps his game, gets him right into it. Rivers now from the 50. Wide open. It's Allen complete. And he's brought down. That one good for 13 and a Charger first. on first down. Got a man over the middle. It's Williams. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. And some options here for the offense on second and two. They'll 
throw again. Rivers looking left sideline incomplete. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. The Chargers on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This time they face a third and two. Now it's a bootleg with Rivers. Gets it to Gordon. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. And when you have a guy in the backfield who can catch the football, you don't just use him strictly for check downs or dump offs. You make him part of the primary passing attack because what you're trying to do is get him into open field and then let him make people miss and advance the football. For the offense lining up first and 10. From the pistol, they run with Gordon. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. But well, it was stopped on that play. We said plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Another tote for Gordon. He's been busy this afternoon. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. It's a loss of two, now third down. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run until they absolutely stop you, and others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool them a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool them on that play. The Chargers on third down, five out of nine thus far. This is third down and 12. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. Now a hit, and Rivers lost the football. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. That's a down and distance coach is always talking about trying to avoid, isn't it? I mean, that's third and long, and you just know they're pinning their ears back and coming after him, sometimes even with extra pressure. And he, he knew that. I mean, he, he knew they were coming. He just fumbled it. Yeah, he knew it. The offensive line knew it. Everyone did, yet the pressure was still there, and he ended up coughing it up. And Denver getting set to take the field. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. First down, here's the run with Anderson. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. A gain of three, second down. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Seven yards to go on second down. Tenth carry now for Anderson. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things. But the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Neutral zone infraction, defense.
jumpy on the right side of the line. Sometimes when you're on the end, a little bit farther away from the ball, any type of movement will get you to jump, and that's exactly what happened there. Accepted. Instead, second down. I'm going to shift gears for a second. You and I were discussing quarterbacks from that 2004 draft class that have maybe fallen off a little bit. Not riding them up, but Roethlisberger, Eli Manning, Phillip Rivers struggling a little bit this season. They certainly are, and Roethlisberger may be the most glaring because he's on a team that still leads their division. Pittsburgh at 3-2 and two at this point, but he threw five interceptions, two pick sixes in his last outing against Jacksonville. Manning and, of course, Rivers, neither one of their teams likely to make the playoffs. So maybe there's room for the new guard. Maybe a Cam Newton coming in or Russell Wilson. Yeah, Matt Ryan. Well, I guess he's been around for a while, but some of those guys, just a changing of the guard yeah. in that position to some degree. Trying to ascend to the top and maybe some of those younger guys like Marcus Mariota, yeah, Jameis, Jameis Winston, Winston, Derek Carr. We'll see. But that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. So here we go, first and ten now. Comes to Anderson. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Second down following the run. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. The 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Oh, he gets lost, you can't find him, and sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guy's trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost. But this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. So the offense has it first and 10. Charles getting the handoff from Simeon. Do stop him, but he takes it all the way to the two. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Now that's the kind of run that fires up an entire team. Tackled at the two-yard line for the defensive guys. A little bit of a sigh of relief, though, that they stopped him short of the goal line. Now they got to figure out how to shore up the rest of the defense. walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Here we go now. They'll let Charles try and get him in. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. That's going to go as a loss of a yard and it'll be second down. So it'll be second and goal when we return. We played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at the StubHub Center in Carson. It's the Broncos trailing, but they do have possession of the football as we begin quarter number four. Ah! 
And from the three now, it's second and goal. Now Anderson. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. And this offense on third down today, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. They're looking at a third and goal here. Now it's Simeon. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Virgil Green, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Broncos have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals before this one they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. And that makes it 14-10. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it ends with a Denver touchdown. Now McManus on to kick this one off. This is fielded a couple yards deep. Gets past one man. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And last time, the turnover on the fumble, and they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> Down on the scoreboard, had a drive going, had pushed it past the 50-yard line, so they felt like they were in striking distance. And to come away with nothing, not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here? Now Rivers going to give to Gordon on the draw. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Brandon, that play certainly felt like what I call a tendency breaker. First and 10, they dial up a draw play. That's not a normal situation, but give credit to the defense. They weren't fooled at all and really finished off the play. Second down, Rivers. Looking for his tight end, Gates, and it's intercepted. And how about this? It's the other Brandon Marshall that picks it off. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Bronco defense has a touchdown. Short throw pick six right there, those linebackers. They love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they? How about the anticipation on the play? Reading, reacting, and then the ability to catch the football and take it in the opposite direction. McManus now for the extra point. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown.
So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This will be taken in at the one. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And fresh off the pick six, they've got to forget about that quickly. In this case now, the guy throwing the ball, he's got to be like what we talk about with defensive backs who get beat for a long touchdown. Short-term memory, right back out there doing the things that he does best and knowing that taking care of the ball is paramount. Here's his opportunity. It all comes back to those defensive backs for the formal D, former DB, right? I don't know where that comes from. It yeah. just kind of emerges out of me for some it's reason. deep in there, right? Yeah. <laughs> First down, Rivers. It's complete right side to Benjamin. And he gets this one all the way up to the 40-yard line. And a nice gain of 21 yards. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Play fake here on first down. And he's got the rookie from Clemson, Mike Williams. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Play fake to Gordon, now Rivers. And nearly picked off. Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but it does get away at its second down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Throwing again, Rivers, and this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. We're making a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. On third down, Rivers. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. Yeah, and on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. He hit his first one, this from 44 yards out now. It's blocked. When that ball was snapped, they were counting on it being now a one-possession game. Instead, the block occurs. That changes the whole mindset for them. And if you're the guys who just blocked it, 
You're floating off the field right now. Big time play. Yeah, big time play. Could have been a one score game. Instead, it stays two scores. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lento. What you really want to be is moderato. Nice and easy, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> Play fake to Anderson. It's Simeon. Sideline throw. It's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. It just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. The Broncos on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and ten. A shotgun snap for Simeon. And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. Joey Bosa with a big-time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. I think people underestimated how important fundamentals are because Joey Bosa's hand placement, hand usage, and ability to beat guys in front of him to get to the quarterback pretty good for a young player. A ten and a half sacks last year as a rookie led all rookies. Only played 12 games too. Uh, that's a good point. Here's Riley Dixon now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Chargers will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. here Rivers across the formation he's got a man that's Allen and he gets this one all the way up to the 40 a really nice gain of 25 yards Brandon so many times we see the crossing route start as a quick hitter but in this play he had time in the pocket and waited for him to clear going across Play action. Rivers. Looking for his tight end. Gates, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And a huge return as he'll take this one all the way down inside the 30-yard line. Well, you're trailing. It's the fourth quarter, and you've got to throw the football. But the defense knows this, too. So they're just going to sit back, bring in an extra defensive back or two, the old nickel or dime strategy, Brandon, and wait for you to put that bad boy up for grabs. And this one winds up being intercepted. Time for us to spotlight C.J. Anderson. 
So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage, okay. Yeah, in this case. And they'll start this drive with very... Very good field position. Green, 39. Green, 39. They give it to Anderson. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. Already second and 12, the defense hoping to push him back more. All right, here we go. Three, 19. Three, 19. Play fake to Anderson. Now Simeon. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in this second half. Instead, it's third down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead. You've got to protect it. And he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? The Broncos on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This is third down and 12. Off the play fake to Charles. This is Simeon. And this is going to be incomplete. So on now is Brandon McManus. He has hit from as far away as 57, but that was in Denver. Spotted at the left hash. This from 45. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And that will stretch the lead up to 13. So the defense gets the pick. The offense, Charles, they go backwards, but they do get three points. Very happy to get to three, but you know who's happier? The defensive team on the other side. They shut them down after the turnover. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Here comes the Chargers offense now back out onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no? You just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. This is Gordon on the dump off. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. It'll be a two-yard game, and it'll be second down. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Set, 
Now a second down throw for Rivers. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. Five yards on the pickup, and all of a sudden here, it's third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Rivers from the gun on third down. Gets it to Benjamin. It's caught. Rivers to Benjamin. Good for the Charger first down. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. and 10, Rivers. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground, incomplete. Second down here after the incomplete pass. to throw again. Rivers toward the sideline and look at that catch. Dragging the toes and that's going to be a first down. Well done. The Chargers passing game rolling a bit here. They've got another first. down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now movement up front. I think they're going to get one of the Charger linemen. All star offense. So the penalty by the offense, and now they face a first and 15. Again, it's Rivers. Over the middle, he's got Tyrell Williams. 12 yards on back-to-back -back plays there, and that's another first down. And the offense still has a couple plays to go to pick up the first on second down and three. They'll run it now out of the gun. Good move at the 30. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Rivers now to throw on first down. Now they go screen. It's complete. A nice little screen. They get six on first down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. 
So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Now movement up front. I think they're going to get one of the Charger linemen. Second down, nine yards to go. From the gun, Rivers. Got a man over the middle, it's Williams. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Now correct me if I'm wrong, yeah, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Going to give it off to Gordon. And he's not even able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Now there's also a flag down. And it's in the area of holding. Holding offense. Yeah, that right there will set him back a bit on the offensive holding penalty. And you know who you want to pressure after a penalty like that? The guy who just committed the foul. You want to see if he's going to keep his head down or if he's going to get his head right back into the game. I'd send a blitz at him right away and see if he holds up. And the penalty now makes it first and 20. Working out of the gun, Rivers. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. Shaquille Barrett from his outside linebacker spot, forcing the sack for a loss of eight. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. Play action now. Rivers. And right side, Henry's got it. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So it's Charger football as we welcome you back from the two-minute warning. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And the Broncos go to a nickel set on third down. Yeah, they've got an extra DB out there. Now movement up front. I think they're going to get one of the Charger linemen. All-star. And now for the offense, this is play number 11 here on this drive. Third and long for Rivers. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed. But if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, oh, 
okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one to five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right. And if you have that one to five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Doesn't you got, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> and he'll bang that one through. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And it ends with the Chargers getting into the end zone. out now to kick this one away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And he'll very wisely take a knee here as they'll bring this one out to the 25 on the touchback. And coming out now, the Broncos. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Another toe here for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Anderson. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. So a defensive timeout. Chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. with Anderson and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39 and now the Chargers are going to signal for another timeout and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down the defense they got a little bit of a breather now they're back and set as we resume play over we'll step aside and now following that timeout the defense back out onto the field They run with Anderson. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. 
Short gain, short gain, last two plays. Who do you think's excited about that? Absolutely, this defense, they're saying go right ahead with those. The Broncos on third down. They're hitting at just 30 percent, three for ten. This is third and eight. Simeon down to throw, and that is incomplete. He was unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Yeah, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. They'll look to throw. And he is out of bounds right around the 20. 14 yards is the pickup there and a Charger first down. And he did exactly what they needed him to do, Charles. Got out of bounds. They have no timeouts. And they knew that before the play even began. Still executed it. How many times have we seen it happen where you know it, yet a guy still looking for a timeout or trying to stay in bounds? He got it done. Fresh set of downs here. He's back to throw. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Antonio Gates that time. And that'll bring up second down. This defense has watched their lead dwindle away. This is where they really need to bow up. They executed well there. And it's often hard after you've played really well early and then you kind of relax a little bit to step on the gas again. They just did it on the last play. Looks like they want to finish this one off. Back to throw. Going underneath for Gordon. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Give him seven on the play, and that's going to lead to a third down. Rivers has been through this many times as he'll hustle his guys to the line. Back to throw. Finds his target. It's Gates. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. How many times have we seen this? Rivers to Gates on third down to keep the Charger drive alive. seen a lot of interceptions from Tlaib over the years and that was a big one to help seal this win. He has such good ball skills just always seems to be around it I mean he gets a chance to make a winning play as we just saw there he tends to take it.
The win for the Broncos, seemingly assured they go down to a knee. Well, partner, even though my phone alarm failed me this morning and I missed our AM workout, we still made it through this thing together, didn't we? Well, you always know I need extra workouts just to keep oh, up with come you, on. so it doesn't matter. But thanks for sharing a booth, and thanks for being our quarterback. Yeah, you're the quarterback. Always a pleasure, my friend. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Southern California.